Hello everyone, my name is Jesse. Welcome to BGM Vibes 6, a series where I check out video game music of a certain theming. And this time we are tackling the cold tundras of snow, ice, chilly, cold themes in video games. And uh, it's been a pretty fun series so far. We're doing all the uh, kind of known biomes and element stuff before we get into the more technical uh, theming later. I uh, just want to get right into it. For those that are new, the way it works is I usually do like video game reactions, uh, video game music reactions. And I wanted to kind of talk about songs that I know, and it somehow turned into this, and also has become a community kind of thing where we, where people on my Patreon vote, even free members, for themed episodes of the VGM Vibe series. So it gets it gets me into hearing these themes and then reacting to them as well and then get to talk about them in depth. So not all of these games I've played, actually most of them I haven't. And the other only thing I have to say is, actually before I forget, thank you for three years. I should have mentioned it's been three years of doing this, which is wild. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention is I usually do like 15 or so songs per episode. This is my biggest episode. We're floating around 25 songs or so, so let's get right into it and into VGM Vibes 6. Put on your coats and your beanies and all that. We are diving in to the first song now. We are starting this episode with a game called Ninja Shadow of Darkness from the PlayStation 1. I believe it was my first PlayStation 1 game ever. I probably, I don't know, but it was a demo. I don't think I owned it. And if I did, I don't remember. But it definitely was on the demo and I re definitely recall that. And I remember it stuck out to me because at the time I remember that it was like the same developers and publishers as Tomb Raider. It was like I think core design and, and Eidos. It's basically this like isometric uh, ninja game, which is very difficult by the way. And you know, you go through all these kind of, uh, it's like an action platformer, some puzzles, and you know, just have a boss at the end of each level and that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward, but uh, really cool special attacks. I remember the like lightning one always caught my attention. It's like extremely overpowered. But uh, we're gonna be talking about the mountain or I believe uh, level nine if I'm correct. And this was like a whole mountainside where there's a, a boss at the end. And then after that, I think there's like a second snowy parts. And I believe that one's called The Icy Wilderness, which also has its own song. So, um, silent protagonist doesn't talk, just this uh, ninja with cool weapons. And I learned a thing uh, when, I was, when I was doing some studying for this song. I learned a thing that I've never even known that I've been doing this whole time. And that is, there's these family of instruments called the chordophones. I play a chordophone, apparently, and that is any instrument that has like a vibrating pulled string. So in my case, I play the guitar. And I was just trying to find out like which instruments were being used here because it has this, uh, you know, very Japanese style. A lot of it sounds like a guzheng or a koto. And I stumbled upon chordophones and just went into a, like a big deep dive. But yeah, very cool song. Uh, a little bit repetitive, but it has this sort of angst and drive that kind of takes you up this mountain, which again is pretty difficult. A lot of traps along with the platforming. You can just die a lot and it's almost pretty normal. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's a great way to start this. I don't know a lot of people that have played this game or if they've even heard about it, but it is one of my earliest memories with the PlayStation 1. The next game I'm going to be speaking of is Stardew Valley, and the song is called Winter. In parentheses, Ancient, so I'm not really entirely sure if there's other versions of wintry songs, although I've been told that there might be. This is a game that I have not played, so I don't know much about. I can just piece together some comments I've seen. I did react to it before this video, and I saw a little bit of the comments and kind of got a grasp of the gameplay and everything. But my only experience with Stardew Valley was Maybe like three years ago, there was a streamer I used to watch all the time. And she used to stream late, like right about the time I went to, to bed. And even though I never like really paid attention to like the gameplay, I knew that's that's all she did. 
and it was just like this cozy thing like it like that stream always put me to sleep and it was a mixture of like everybody being cool and then the, i remember like the game having this kind of just cozy feeling to it i don't know how to explain it but from what i've seen in the community it's like a very uh productive game you can spend a lot of time and hours just um farming doing this doing that and as a quite a quite a large community as well and the the thing that stuck out to me as I was doing some studying for this game is that it's essentially one person. And I think that's pretty intense, you know, Concerned Ape. I don't know much about them, but the whole creating the game, making music for the game, I can only imagine the stress that that entails. So to see like all that hard work pay off and to have cherished fans of your product, I, I that's... That has to be one of the best feelings ever because I cannot imagine doing all that and, you know, having the opposite effect. The song is really nice. It's kind of encapsulates this whole wintry, slightly Christmas-y sound. And uh, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of like a, a lo-fi, the lo-fi genre. And the thing that stuck out to me was the use of a sitar-like instrument, which is... I think the first time I've ever heard anything like that in a snow-related theme. Usually I would, you'd hear a sitar in something like, I don't know, desert, something hot. Um, it was used, I actually, I'm pretty sure I had like some sitar songs. I did in the uh, fire-themed episode, the previous one. So yeah, it was, it was cool hearing that, these blend of styles. And um, the song to me is kind of screamed this, like, you can just be here for hours and hours and just be very calm. So even though I haven't played it, Stardew Valley to me sounds like the ultimate kind of therapeutic experience and is a game that uh, in the nicest way possible I have to stay away from because I know a game like that is something that I would sink way too many hours into. <laughs> so Stardew Valley Winter Ancient was the song and now we're going to talk about a game that is completely has to do with winter and snow. The next game I'm going to be talking about is a game called Frostpunk, which to my knowledge is a bit of a city builder type game, but the whole premise is you're trying to survive the bitter cold and you have to stay warm, you got to keep up with your supplies. And honestly, that sounded so fascinating to me because when I reacted to it a long time ago, um, people were telling me about this and I, I, I never, I've never played a game like that. So I was very interested. I'm like, tell me more. What do you mean you have to like... Um, you know, because I'm used to like action adventure games and like, you know, basically anything but these sort of just kind of, um, I don't even know what the proper term is, just like thinking games, I guess, where you're constructing things and making something out of uh, nothing, essentially. But I, I heard that the premise was like kind of flipped on its head where you got to stay warm and all these things. You have this, you have this, what I imagine has to be like this... Um, clock ticking kind of feel like a little bit of stress because you got lives on the line and everything so this song is a very very theatrical very cinematic it sounds like a movie uh like a movie trailer like this could be i could i could imagine this being a a, a movie trailer just by looking at it and apparently from what i'm told is that the city must survive is pretty much the essence of the game to a t where there is no final boss in this game but the final boss is the weather itself is the incoming storm that's kind of what i gather from it so as someone who didn't play it i pretty much kind of got that um from the comments and it honestly sounds pretty uh pretty fascinating but the whole idea of the whole game being centered around snow and ice and surviving these cold winters i i knew this was going to be in this like long long ago so i, I don't think honestly anything more fitting can be in this uh in this list and uh, <clears throat> when i uploaded this 11-bit studios who created the game was one of the first developers that i recall like commenting on my channel that was not normal and you know i didn't send it to them or anything they just commented it and then even the composer uh piotr musial reached out to me on twitter so they're super cool people you know they were like hey you know, look out for more stuff. And this was like two years ago when I reacted to it. 
And since then, they have just released a new game as I'm recording this. Frostpunk 2 is out like, j as of like last week. So nice timing on that. But yeah, super cool people. And I can't imagine um, the stress that this game induces, but also the calm, serene nature. Like even though the song is very intense and sounds like a boss fight, there's just this aura of just way, way bitter cold. And I mean, well, there's nothing much to say with the, with the title like Frostpunk. The name is pretty much very much the idea, I think. The city must survive, I think, is a perfect, you know, synopsis of the whole game. So that is my pick for Ice Teams. Next on my list is a game called Celeste and the song is called Reach for the Summit. This is probably one of the songs I know the least amount, so excuse me there. It is a song that I reacted to pretty much right before I started to gather information for this episode, so it's still very new to me. Again, I had to kind of rely on the comments and um, although I haven't played it yet, I'm not gonna lie, it looks like a game that I would probably fancy someday when you know, I say that a lot, but, you know, it looks like a game that I would play because it reminds me of um, a game I really enjoyed that I played a couple years ago called Guacamelee. And it seems to have, from what I've seen, it seems to have a similarity with, like, uh, 2D platforming, uh, kind of slightly Metrovania look. I'm not entirely sure. But from what I've gathered, this song is actually... I feel bad a little bit because I, I from what it sounds like, this song has a lot of depth and a lot of meaning to it so I wanted to you know talk about it as much as I could without knowing what's going on but it seems like to me is the whole premise of Celeste is overcoming and Celeste is seems to be from what I've gathered a metaphorical it, it's quite it, it's the name of the mountain but also metaphorically like you know overcoming and as the song says, reach for the summit. So I know it's like towards the end and it is, it's a huge long section. Like the song was like 11 minutes or something, if I recall. And it's just about this uh, girl who's, I guess, finding out about herself and pretty much like, I guess that's all I can say without getting into like kind of spoilery stuff. And, but basically what I wanted to focus on since what I do know is the music. The music is completely filled with everything that I can think of as far as a cold theme. There's crystal-like keyboards. There's like the ambient aura of like the chords and then the constant, constant change. And this is one one thing I really, I really liked about the, the length of the song was the dynamics of it. Similar to a, what I'd imagine a real snowstorm to be is constant changing you know it's coming down hard it's very lightly you know things like that i've never experienced snow in person but i can imagine the um the feeling of that but also one thing i wanted to mention that was uh, i thought was pretty interesting is in my reaction i felt like this song by the way i did not have footage uh when i was reacting to it i just saw the artwork not even this artwork but like the album artwork and my reaction to that is um to that song was that it felt like it was pushing you it felt very motivational and you know like you're almost there which is so funny because i had no idea and that was one of those times where you know my guesses seem to have landed on the mark it doesn't always happen and the comments were kind of resounding like hey you were actually weren't too far you it is definitely like you know pushing you towards the end that home stretch feeling and i think having uh that sort of emotional push in in a list like this along with the snow part is something very special and you know that's one thing that i i did want to emphasize when i was starting to do the the vibe series is kind of grab a whole lot of perspectives so if you notice there's a lot of years there's a lot of consoles there's different emotions within the themes sometimes there's themes that just have the name of like snow or fire or something so i wanted to get all like the whole thing it was it's not just simply like snow level or something like that you know 
if it relates to the character or their abilities or something. But from what it seems like to me in, in this game is that Celeste is all about overcoming that, uh, both metaphorically and literally like the cold, the coldness of Earth, I guess. And it's really funny because this is a very similar game that we're going to talk about later with roughly the same idea. But that is Celeste, Reach for the Summit. I wish I knew more about it, but still a very great song. And uh, one of uh, Lena Rain's, in my opinion, one of their best. But we're going to move on to a game that where the focus is not one person, but about eight of them. The next game I'm going to be talking about is Octopath Traveler 2, a game I have not played and don't know much about, but I will be playing very soon. So as of right now, I don't have much to talk about this song, but I will as much as I can. But in just a very few amount of months, I will be playing uh, both of these games. So I'm excited. And it's because of songs like this. Songs like this got me curious about it. If those who don't know, uh, whenever I do decide to play games, which is somewhat rare, it is because of the soundtrack inspires me to, it catches my attention enough and then I start to look into other things and if it all seems to fit the bill, then I go for it. And not only that is a lot of times I've reacted to Octopath Traveler music. There's a footage that I've seen with it and the footage every time captivates me. It looks like a pop-up book to me. So it reminds me of like my childhood. And um, yeah, so I can't wait to play it. But from what I, the little I do know about these games, uh, it seems like to me the premise is a JRPG with a focus on eight different characters in the title. And uh, that's another thing I'm excited for, to have so many, you know, paths to take. But anyways, the song is The Winterlands, Day and Night. There is a, There was a little bit of a pattern I noticed in this episode with day and night cycles. We'll get into those. And basically it's... This is going to be one of those ambient songs on the list where musically it's very beautiful, but not a whole lot going on. It's just a couple of piano chords, but the violin to me is what's really kind of carrying the whole thing. The piano is doing a very simple, just da -da 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 -da. which by the way, the nighttime version is the exact same, but it goes up an octave. So same exact notes, just uh, higher on the keyboard or the piano, I should say. And then the nighttime version, which is right here, by the way, I have it all set up. Uh, this one focuses on uh, vocals, which I predicted. <laughs> and very nice vocals at that. So basically, it's very ambient. To me, this song sounds like kind of the equivalent if I were to imagine a snow globe. I know they don't make noise, but I think some do, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe. I know some have lights in them. But when I, when I shake a snow globe, which I've never owned, by the way, I've always wanted one. I feel like I would hear a song like this, you know, like similar to how you open a like a, a card and it has those like built in songs. I feel like if they were if if they were to ever make a snow globe with music, this would be perfect for that. It just has that very loopable ambient sound. And the thing that stuck out to me the most was, again, the violin. It almost sounds a bit concerning, a little scary. It's very intense compared to the piano. And everything else the the violin is very beautiful but there's this just little tiny section that uh you'll hear once uh, not not even too long into the song maybe less than a minute and it just has this almost foreboding effect and that makes me very curious as to like what's going on here what was that choice and that's pretty much all i have to say about the song it's very much a snow-filled area as i can that's from what i've noticed there's a frozen lake that you uh, ride uh, like a, a boat on, canoe. And um, last thing I'll say about it is uh, Yasunori Nishiki is a composer that I never even heard about until, you know, this channel. And I've been thoroughly impressed with everything. I sense such detail in like everything he does, whether it's ambient or very character specific, or so far my favorite is his boss music stuff. Man. So yeah, that is... Octopath Traveler 2, a uh, game I'll be playing later because I'll be playing Octopath Traveler 1. So, yeah, 
Very great song. That is The Winterlands, Day and Night. Up next, we're going to talk about a song called Fairy of AIF or Fairy of Ice. We'll talk about that later. From Sonic Gems Collection, AIF standing for Aurora Icefields. This song, man, <laughs> where do I start with this one? I knew this was going to be in the video, like, as soon as I thought of Snow as the idea. There's a lot to talk about this. I also had to research some things. I learned a lot. Let's talk about the the main thing here. Um, let's talk about one slight smaller thing. Sonic has been featured in the Vibe series so often. He's kind of like the reigning champ right now, but uh, for good reason. I mean, he goes everywhere, every lo locale. But uh, this song was, I think, the first time in, in my life where I heard a Sonic song that sounded so different. And it's one of, still to this day, one of my favorite reactions on this channel. It's one of my favorite videos. I don't often remember my videos because I do so many. But I'll never forget Fairy of AIF. Uh, ever. <laughs> because of all, like, just all these circumstances. For one, the, the song was amazing. I heard it twice. The, the fact that it's like a song that's buried within some sub menus and you, you have to like kind of go out of your way to find it. Uh, the fact that it's a remix that I had to like look up, which I'll talk about more in a second. The fact that it's Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, which is like the game over, yeah, the Sega legend, who also did Daytona USA, who's also found my channel and commented on my channel. Like there's all these, there's this like <laughs> aura of like just good vibes when it comes to the song. It's such a great song. Um, and another funny thing that I thought was very interesting is that a lot of people seem to like the song, but no one seems to know what Takanobu is saying. Like the lyrics, I've, I've yet to see an official lyric sheet. It, people just have like speculations, so I don't know. And then the other thing I was going to say was, uh, I've always known it as Fairy of AIF, but the official like Sega upload with Takanobu's like album art, it says Fairy of Ice. So I don't know. Anyways, so this song is actually a remix version with vocals of a song called Aurora Icefield from Sonic the Fighters, which is a game I've never even heard in my life. Which is apparently a Sonic fighting game. <laughs> like, what hasn't he done? And this song is that song, so it starts the same. Dun, 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 da, 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 dun, dun. But it's instrumental. But for some reason in the Sonic Gems collection, which to my knowledge seems to be like a, just a collection of Sonic games, kind of reminiscent of like those old like demos, like you know, just have like a menu and you cycle through games and it's just in there, but it's in there in like the gallery and like, a, I think it's called a museum. And then there's like a player, a music player, and then there's Fairy Valley. It's so bizarre. There's a good channel for that uh, from the channel JPIN88. Yeah, so, oh, and then the last thing is that this is for the, ch this is for the stage of uh, Bark the Polar Bear. Yeah, so there's a lot going on here, but it's one of my favorite reactions. It's such a great song. The vocals are amazing, dude. They're amazing. I don't know what he's saying, but they're amazing. He has uh, this chorus that sounds a little bit of uh, like the Temptations or the Stylistics, you know? Like his musical taste is so good. Such a cool guy. And I'll never forget uh, that reaction. It's, it's so fun. And whenever I tell someone about like my channel or they don't know about me, I usually direct them to that video because I, I make so many f like facial animations. <laughs> it's fun to look back on. But yes, of course, the uh, as soon as I was going to do a snow episode, I'm like, I'm going to put Fairy VIF in there. And probably some people suspect that I was going to put that in there. Anyways, there's Fairy VIF some from Sonic Gems Collection. Mega Man X, chill penguin stage. I'm gonna keep this one short and brief because I never played this game, but I'll just tell you what I know and what I've experienced. This song is super cool, <laughs> no pun intended. The way it starts off with just like this, I don't know, you know like those movies where they just show like a hacker and they're just like pressing buttons. That's what I envision when I hear this intro. But then it goes into this really like funky thing. There's all this bass going on and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just me. But as soon as the the main melody kicks in, to me it sounds it makes me so nostalgic 
because it reminds me of Smooth McGroove. I don't know if anyone else hears that, but like every time it, it sounds like Smooth McGroove like harmonizing with himself when it's like 20 of him on screen. And that's a YouTuber I've been watching since like in my teens, so. Anyways, um, so Chill Penguin Stage, from what I gathered, I reacted to this song not too long ago. Uh, I learned a lot that day, because up until that, I thought Mega Man X was Mega Man 10. Apparently, no. 10, or X is like the series, I guess, someone would put it. Either way, it's not 10. I don't know what is 10, by the way. Not, I never thought about that. Is there a Mega Man 10? Anyways, um, composed by Yuki uh, EY, who went by Sato at this time. This one is, uh, I saw the level, I saw the, the footage of it. I always look at footage for BGM vibes. And uh, it looked pretty pretty cool. Like, you know, you start off on this like ice field and you immediately go into this kind of factory thing. And honestly, it reminded me a lot of like a Sonic stage, like a Sonic layout. It looked very reminiscent, which is funny because we just talked about Sonic. But um, the thing that I noticed and learned is that I was under the impression that Central Highway was like the main, was like the opening of the game. But apparently in this game, you can kind of choose your first level, which I can't think of many games that do that. So, and from what I hear and seen that this is usually what people favor because it's easy. You have a, um, a very simple boss, Chill Penguin. And apparently you get the, uh, what is it, the, the dash boots, which is a very important ability. And by the way, this game looks incredibly fun. I'm, I really want to play it one day because it just looks like such a good time. And every, every bit of music I've heard from Mega Man X has been sublime. Uh, but that's all I have to say about it. And actually I just lied because I just remembered <laughs> there is a very cool use of stereo panning here. This whole song is just bouncing from left to right speaker and it just makes the whole thing feel so alive and it just adds to the whole coldness of it but alas um those are my thoughts but i'm gonna move on to maybe someone who knows a little bit more uh about speaking about capcom hey everyone it's babe roofless and i'm here today to talk about an ice theme song Frostman's theme from Mega Man 8 is extremely memorable to me, not just because it's very well executed, but also because of the atmosphere of when it plays in-game. As a kid, whenever I would get to the second part of Frostman stage, the snowboarding section, sometimes I would just sit and listen to the song instead of, you know, actually playing the game. With the level, you have this vast night sky and twinkling city lights behind you as you slide down on a snowboard, the lights slowly fading as you continue downwards. It also stands out among other similar theme stages for me, because oftentimes when I think of a snow or ice theme stage, I expect something like a North Pole where it's this vast blank tundra, but Capcom's decision to do a cityscape here is more unique and creative. Now folks might have some trauma with this song, since in the infamous snowboarding sequence, the song is drowned out by a robotic jump 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 or slide slide slide. This part is pretty hard, and it was difficult for me to get through as a kid, but playing it now, I see it as a fun challenge. Not to mention, the song itself is just pure distilled winter essence. Now, I'm no musician like Jesse, but to me it sounds very chill with groovy undertones carried by a bass guitar. There's a lot of synth reverb holds that remind me of bells, and the occasional hard sounding chord that strikes the listener like icicles hitting the floor. The main melody is carried through horn and synth, and when combined with the accompaniment, really gives this song such a smooth, sort of blustery quality about it that is absolutely amazing. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. As a longtime fan of your channel, it's a pleasure to be part of this series. Now, when are you gonna react to the Guilty Gear XX Slayer's Korean theme? And what better way to follow up a Babe Ruthless section than with fighting game music? This is Undernight in Birth. Let me see if I get this right. It's EXE Late CLR, otherwise known as Uniclur. The Undernight names are pretty intense, but I'm glad to finally feature Undernight here. It is a, a fighting game, and 
in a similar vein of like Melty Blood and all that. It is a composed is composed by Raito, who has their own YouTube channel. This is the theme of Londrekia. This is Icefield White Knight. This was a reaction I did a little while ago, and man, it stuck out like crazy. So I don't know I don't know anything about Lindrekia. I never played a Melty. Uh, sorry, I never played uh, Undernight, and uh, it looks it's a really gorgeous 2D game. But the, the art style is really good, very reminiscent of Blaze Blue and games like that. But from what I've gathered, you know, we've talked about stages and stuff like that. But now we're talking about like an ice character. This character is completely all ice attacks. Um, Lindrekia seems to be, uh, from what I've gathered, I need to know it's a very posh character very well dressed has this uh, sort of cane like weapon and the weapon is called the riddle and i think the nickname for this character is the frozen fang of eternity and i checked out some of the um, some of the uh attributes this, this character has and it seems to all follow the theme of ice for example the uh like the way he walks is kind of like reminiscent of like a ice skater stuff like that and um, the names of all the moves. I couldn't find like a, a whole move set name, but here's some examples to give you an idea. We have uh, Frozen Slope, Frozen Spire, Frozen Vine, Hailstorm, and uh, the Ice Prison. So it's like, you know, the whole thing is just like this. Just think of like a character who's like just very elegant, can beat you up and take you across the screen all while like freezing you constantly. Pretty cool premise, and that is Londrickia. But the song itself, is just this like onslaught of piano and electric guitar and by the way no bias for those that don't know i play guitar but no bias the electric guitar in this song is superb it sounds so good and honestly like the way it sounds with the piano just enhances it that much further it has a little bit of like a classical song vibe too and it is extremely memorable and catchy and i think it's just one of those earworms that as soon as um, you hear it once, you're probably going to know it forever. And um, that's really cool. You know, I really, uh, I came from like a fighting game background. So to, to still talk about fighting game music, which I very much love, it's, I still think it's an extremely underrated genre when it comes to music. Um, it's really cool to have this here and to talk about Undernight. And even though I never played it, and I've only heard like four or five songs from this whole series, I've loved all of them. And my favorite being Lundrekia. So... The ice character and the frozen fang of eternity. Snow in Summer from Near or Near Replicant, the remake. Uh, the song that I'm talking about at this moment is the original, but they're both almost identical, but we'll talk about that more. Uh, this song also was featured back when I used to do the top 20 lists of, of games after I played them. Uh, sorry, the top 20 list of songs from games after the games I played. Uh, this song was in there, and I talked about it a lot more in depth there. So it is one of my favorite songs in the, in the, in the whole game. Uh, no spoilers here if you haven't played it, because it is the very opening of the game. So as soon as you click new game, boom, snow and summer. This scene right here, this random shop what's going on here this is the tutorial section um kaichi okabe of course um i will say though i did get slightly spoiled on something so if you don't want well i'm not going to say it here but i also wasn't planning on playing the games prior um all i will say no spoilers i will say that near is a extension of a series called drakengard and that kind of relates to this uh, snow here. So I'll just say that. And one thing I found very interesting, though, uh, I didn't notice, and I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but when I was doing research for this, I could be, I didn't write down the exact years, but the years, as soon as you get into the screen here, it's, a, it's cinematic, it shows you what year it is. And I, I could be wrong about this. I didn't write it down, but I think in the original near, it says summer 2049. And in the replicant, the remade version, it says summer 2053. Either way, the year was changed. I never noticed that, and I don't know an explanation for that. But anyways, we know Yoko Taro's strange and likes to change things up. So, um, yeah, this is where you meet the 
you know, protagonist and someone else. This is the, basically the tutorial section of the game. Um, as soon as you after, watch a couple cutscenes, you'll be thrown into combat and then your first boss. And the song is just kind of carrying you through that very... If, if that, that song, or say the song, feels really cold. With, with, with the visuals going on, I think it's just the embodiment of cold. But I think it's more cold, not only just feeling and weather, but like the expression, like the emotion of cold. This game is cold, you know? And if you know, you know. It's just, it's very dark and gloomy and yeah. But um, as some of you know, this game got remade to near replicant, the version one point, blah, blah, blah. And um, the original near game was, uh, you know, the dad and daughter and then got remade to the brother and sister. But the soundtracks were, I, uh, they were remade too, but they were essentially the same, just obviously higher definition, better quality instruments, blah, blah, blah. And there's always going to be a debate which one sounds better. Um, for the most part, the Replicant soundtrack is pretty faithful, but they add little things here and there. In the Replicant version of this song, it's basically the same up until the tutorial section where you're fighting. They added a really cool violin section that I think really adds to the song and that's not present in the first original song. But um, either way, Snow and Summer is a great first introduction to the Nier series. If you think about it, it is the first song you hear when you start your Nier journey. Although I started with Automata and went backwards to Replicant. Just the idea of like hearing this as your first introduction to Nier would be so cool. So Snow and Summer is a... Uh, beautiful song and definitely in my my personal top 20 of this whole soundtrack it is iconic and of course it was going to be here i absolutely love it when music in a game can sort of transport you back to that moment and it happens for all sorts of different reasons, be it story or character or just like a really cool fight, but also when it comes to just the stage or level that you're playing. Sometimes the music associates not just with the action of what's happening on screen, but also just the vibe of the area you're playing in, be it a snowy level, for example, or an underwater level, or a desert level, or a city level, or any sort of stage that evokes something through music that connects with you. And when it comes to winter levels or snowy levels, there are many examples that I can think of off the top of my head that I absolutely love. Uh, Ace Combat 5 has a great snow level where you can sort of feel the wind and the, the whiteout conditions as you fly through. But my favorite is Final Fantasy X. And in Final Fantasy X, yes, there is in fact a snow level. That song is called Phantom, Phantoms, I believe, but that's not what I'm talking about. There's another song that I love that really isn't about snow, but for some reason, I think winter, I think a mountain, I think scaling up a mountain when it comes to servants of the mountain, that's the name of the song, it is beautiful. But for some reason, when I hear it, I don't think of the people it represents or the moment in the game it represents. For some reason, it just screams winter theme to me. And I'm not sure why that is, but every time someone says, what is your favorite winter snowy theme in a video game, that's the one I go to. It's my go-to every time. And I don't know why, I just have associated it with climbing up a mountain maybe, or snowy peaks, I'm not sure. But it also could just be halfway through the song, it sort of has this, like, I don't know, melody that plays that makes me think of winter. And hopefully, when you listen to it, you'll be like, yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. Up next, we're going to talk about The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, Secunda. This is, uh, I'm going to get out of, this, out of the way very quickly. This is one of those times where I feel like I could really join you guys. I feel like I could be amongst you that have all these nostalgic memories with this game because I know this game was massive and uh, although the VGM vibe series is mostly songs I know and songs I've already reacted to um, as, you, as you've as you seen uh, I've had people that have joined me that does 
that do have like some context and can help out but um this is one of those times where even though i can research it and look up footage this song felt very uh fomo fear of missing out and man it's just the song is so beautiful i don't know much about it i just know that it's this just serene feeling of comfort and i've seen some people call it as like uh their equivalent to being home and all that i've just seen footage and i'm like captivated by that i love aurora borealis there's one right there i've seen footage in the daytime and the whole thing is uh, from what from what i understand is um because i haven't played this game is that it's very nature secunda is very much like a snow filled landscape very nature trees snow rivers and it's just this over overworld of um how do i put it well i should have mentioned by the way that uh if, if you're new here that a lot of these songs were voted for so there's some of my picks but about half of these songs are user submitted and then voted for to be in this episode uh, relating to the topic and uh skyrim secunda was that was definitely uh up there as far as far as one of the higher votes and i think i know why <laughs> you know even though the song is very atmospheric and ambient there's just this, this beauty to it that i can't explain and it's so weird because like um, though I have no intentions on playing it because it's just not something I would play and especially nowadays I think it's I don't know if it's still as popular either way like I've mi I missed my opportunity right I, I missed the whole craze of it all the, the song just really makes me want to explore the whole soundtrack I've heard two songs from Skyrim uh, Dragonborn and this one and both times I've been a little left aloof to put it lightly so I don't have much to say about Secunda, but I can feel the energy through the screen when people talk about it. So many memories, so much nostalgia, and I think that's beautiful. We are talking about another Sonic game. This is Sonic Unleashed, Cool Edge, Night. I'm going to mostly talk about Night here because that was the one that was voted. And substantially, by the way, had a huge amount of votes. But I'll touch upon the daytime version a little bit. I took it upon myself to listen to the daytime version. It was not requested, but I put them together because I wanted to get that contrast. And I'm glad I did because this game taught me uh, another night, day and night cycle thing. And I was thoroughly impressed by just how different the songs were. And from what I've gathered, I did not know this, but this game is uh, kind of a like two games in one sort of thing. And I'm not sure about the rest of the stages, but at least for this one, which is, seems to take place in Holoska, <laughs> uh, the daytime version, which is very much a kind of like that early 2000s Sonic sound, very rock, very fast, a lot of drum and bass. Uh, the song matches the the aesthetic. It's very quick, you know, it's typical Sonic moving very quickly to the level. The camera changes from like behind the back to side of course it's like a snow place and um when it switches to the nighttime which by the way it's a different composer the daytime is tomoyo tani and the nighttime is fumi kumutani who i've never heard of until this episode so she did fantastic on the night version so the nighttime apparently the game switches into a i guess like a kind of like a dr jekyll and mr hyde kind of thing where sonic turns into a where is it oh, a werehog which right here and then it becomes a, uh, from what I've seen, it looks like a, kind of like an action RPG almost, but what still has the traces of like Sonic, like he can move kind of fast and still ring collecting, but the whole vibe changes now, you know, now it's no longer about strictly moving fast, it's about just beating stuff up and the whole song just really reflects that. This song was, had so many votes and had so many people talking about it. Cool Edge Night to me, was one of those, um, like, what? I don't know how to explain it, but just like, I was just so grateful that uh, I got to hear it, you know? Like, I was just so happy that I got to hear it because I haven't really explored that side of Sonic. I know Sonic has a lot of genres and styles and composers and history, being a mascot and everything, but I was, I was unaware of 
unleashed and you know what it brought to the table and man it really made me excited to hear the rest of unleashed and i even went to go back and hear my rooftop run reaction and it was it's just been so cool and um, apparently this is from the album um i couldn't find like the proper i i use uh, for my resources i use vgmdb Dot com for all my credits and stuff. Sometimes I use a, another website that shows like pictures of uh, like booklets and stuff. But uh, I, this one is part of something called the Planetary Pieces Sonic World Adventure soundtrack. I don't know. Anyways, this song, fantastic. I love that it not only does it sound cold and chilly and cool, but it also sounds like nighttime. So if I ever do like a night themed episode, which of course I will. Um, it, it's it's like killing two birds with one stone, you know? It sounds like a cold night. And this song sounds like that. I think the song is amazing and it's one of my favorites that are here. And it's one of the better songs that I've heard on the channel, for sure. We get a little two for one special here because both of these were voted on and I decided to bundle them up together. And I'm glad I did because they actually happen to be very closely related to each other. This is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. And we have Northeast Frost Street and Battle of Blizzard Bridge. And before I even say anything, I just want to say that I've loved everything I've heard from Kirby so far. It's been one of those games that I really wanted to dive into when I started the reaction series because it's just, you know, it's Kirby. Everyone's heard of Kirby. I've always seen Kirby. So I was always curious on the music and every single time I've heard a song from Kirby, it's like 10 out of 10. Like they do, they just, they take it so seriously and it's just, it's unbelievable. So I saw footage of this one and uh, from what I've gathered, and uh, again, please correct me if I'm wrong in any of these. I don't claim to know. I just, I, I gather my comments in for my reactions or watch some footage. And from what it looks like, this is, a, uh, a world, so it's called Winterhorn's World 4, and this would be 4-1 Northeast Frost Street. And I believe Battle of Blizzard Bridge is, I believe, the penultimate stage of 4-4, four, four. so there's five total. Um, I thought Battle of Blizzard Bridge was a, a final boss or like a boss team, but uh, not really. So Northeast Frost Street, to me, what I gather, it seems to be like a either a video game version of, of London or something equivalent. Uh, the whole place is just filled with snow, a lot of platforming. This game looks really fun, by the way. It looks like something I would love. Um, it looks like a game I played called A Hat in Time, where it's like a collect-a-thon and do these like tiny little tasks everywhere and find puzzles everywhere. It just looks like a game I would I would play. I'm not just gonna be honest. And uh, I saw like all these abilities that he was doing. That like he was like uh, like when he sucked up certain enemies, he would like. Uh, ice skate around and have like a freeze breath all this kind of stuff apologies i had to find the image of battle of blizzard bridge but one thing i really just love about this by the way i know it may seem kind of silly but like i don't know what the, the term here like the cinematography but like the the angle of this shot as the first thing you see is amazing i just i love that it reminds me of kind of like when cloud is looking up at midgar and uh, or shinra i should say and I just think this is so cool. And then I saw, I saw the, the way it plays out. And it seems like just this very linear level. And then, you know, you kind of get to explore little side areas on the side of the bridge. Um, basically, I've been talking about the game a lot. But the music is just... <sighs> Dude, it's just... It's perfect for this whole, like, cold theme, right? Everything since just sounds like little crystallized pianos. And this just wintry sort of chord progressions and then we have these really just subtle guitars that are there and then we have these kind of Rhodes piano which I just one of my favorite instruments I think the uh, I'm gonna be very excited to hear more Kirby along with the, the vibe series I'm sure they're gonna return in future episodes because I think now that I've seen like properly what gameplay looks like it's probably like in the same realm of like Sonic and stuff like that and you just this character goes everywhere and and I'm sure the music is just as great. So even though I haven't played it and uh, I already praised it enough in my reactions with those, uh, the, yeah, the music is just absolutely the epitome of snow, cold, and ice. 
Legendary video game music from ice, cold, winter sort of themes? Well, there's three of them that really stand out to me and always have done since I was a kid. The first is the one you're listening to right now. Donkey Kong Country has an iconic soundtrack on the Super Nintendo, and this track in particular is one of my favourite pieces of music when we're talking about cold-themed video game tracks. I don't really know how to describe it as someone that isn't sort of educated in music, I don't really know what words to use, but I'll just give you a quick history lesson. You've just beat this really difficult barrel cannon stage, and that was a stage that already has really good music. However, as you enter the ice caves, there's just something really jolly, really uplifting about it, that at the same time is just really pleasant to listen to in the background and stands out for me as one of the greatest tracks the game has to offer. The second game is Blaster Master for the NES. Now, this is one of the few games I actually owned for the NES, and something that even when I was a kid, I could not finish. It was far too difficult. However, the game had a variety of different areas, or stages, or levels, whatever you want to call it, and every single one of them had fantastic music. My favorite piece of music in the game is Area 6, themed around ice. Now it's a bit tricky, you're sliding around all over the place and I actually wasn't able to get as far into the game to show you some footage so I'm just going to show you some images I found on Google, but this stage is ridiculously fun to play and it has a really cool boss. The thing that stands out the most is going to be the music and always will be because it's my favourite track in the entire game. There's something about the flow of this and just it summarises perfect NES music to me that I'll just let the game take it away. Now my absolute favourite piece of video game music surrounding this theme is actually the theme of Glacius from the arcade version of the original Killer Instinct. I mean it's very simple, you're an ice alien, it's a sort of icy stage as you can clearly tell, but there is just something inherently weird about it and I think the music permanently sums it up because it's this strange creature that you're playing as, you've got this really cool looking stage and for me the sounds they just have this almost like sharp tone that's kind of inherently cool to listen to. Either way, this is my favourite piece. Take it away, Killer Instinct. Valak Mountain from Xenoblade Chronicles 1, or Definitive Edition, however you want to put it. Uh, I played the Definitive Edition not too long ago, and I loved every moment of it. It was my first, it was my first like Nintendo game in like th almost 30 years, and uh, it was I had a Switch gifted to me by the community of Xenoblade Chronicles. They really wanted me to play it. I loved all the music so far, so it made total sense for me to uh, try it out. And Valak Mountain is one of those places. Uh, I don't want to like spoil it, but. Um, it's like the snow area of the game. You're on the uh, the Bionis, which I'm not going to spoil. And this is just a very... Um, although the music here is spectacular and I love this area, it's one of those very uh, plain type sections. There's like not a lot to do here. It's very flat. Well, I should say it's definitely a mountain, so it's sloped. But uh, there's not a lot of like... You know, it's just very much... Uh, a plane with a couple of caves and and all that but uh the music to me really stood out because i remember immediately it had this kind of clarinet sound and immediately reminded me of terra from final fantasy 9 if you're familiar with that 
And if you ever saw my top 20 of Final Fantasy IX tracks, Terra was way up there. Uh, I'm not going to say where, but way up there. And uh, it just has this perfect ambience of snow. And anything that can remind me of like another highly regarded song is always a good time. And we have these uh, sort of like glockenspiel sounds. And honestly, like you can't really go wrong with Xenoblade Chronicles music. I, ever since I heard the first song ever, which was Counterattack, it's been kind of like a nonstop ride. And this is also one of those uh, games that have like a day and night cycle, which I guess I can just like fast forward to here. I don't know exactly where it is. Yeah, so the nighttime here is so gorgeous. We have these rays of light everywhere and it has a little bit of a yellow hue. And <clears throat> the nighttime version of the song is actually quite different. And I think that's what really stood out to me is uh, as opposed to just sounding like the daytime version with the same chords and everything, it's now focused on like a very jazzy night piano, almost Christmas-like. And now we have a little bit of uh, percussion introduced into the nighttime version, very lo-fi, very chill. But the whole Valak Mountain thing is just such a memorable place and such a cool story section as well. The whole game is cool, play Xenoblade. And uh, yeah, I've just loved every moment with Xenoblade. And Valak Mountain is something that was without a question going to be on here and was definitely one of my favorite places in Xenoblade Chronicles. And just like that, of course, we have to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the other snow area for this game that is the Kingdom of Tantal. Uh, fun fact, this was not going to make it into the episode. It was a very late edition. It was the, the latest edition because I already decided on Valak Mountain when I was writing this episode and planning it out. But I'm currently playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And uh, I discovered the Kingdom of Tantel like as soon as, like right around the same time. And I thought to myself, I'm like, do I, do I want to put it on here again? And technically it's a different game and this is also my list. So yeah, hell yeah, dude. Xenoblade Chronicles music is amazing. All of it. And especially 2, which I'm currently playing and almost finishing, it is such a good time. The Kingdom of Tantel is a very uh, uh, similar to Valak Mountain, where it kind of features like a kind of higher area and a lower area. It's more emphasized here. It's very much like a upper section, lower section. So there's a lot of height and verticality to it. And a very uh, central kind of third area with like a market and like the kingdom, I guess. A uh, very great song. You know, it has technically f four songs. If you want to go include the day and the night cycle, we have the the song we're here listening to now, which is the Kingdom of Tantel, which has a very memorable choir section. Da -da 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 then we have the nighttime version, which is the same thing with just the uh, instrumental, just as beautiful. But it also has another song where uh, it features, which is not here in this video, but if you know about it, you know about it. It features the uh, uh, it's in uh, Theosaur, the Kingdom section where it's a song called The Shadow of the Lowlands, and that is a very Yasunori Matsuda uh, sound. There's me switching to nighttime, even though I don't think it looks like night. Yeah, because there was like a winter storm or something. But yeah, the Kingdom of Tantel has been one of my favorite sections of the game. It's gorgeous. It's uh, There's a little more stuff to do than Valak Mountain, but um, this is just one of those times where uh, I feel very grateful because I discovered Xenoblade Chronicles on this channel, and the first song I heard was Counterattack, which is from this game and just been on this journey of hearing the music and then like the community bought me a switch you know it was like it's such a big deal and they've all been so cool and like i don't know it's just even as i look at this now like i i don't want the game to end because i know it's coming but uh, i've enjoyed every part of this game and uh the music is I, can, I feel like i could talk about the music forever and i wish i can include it in more of these episodes but Xenoblade Chronicles 2, The Kingdom of Tantal, of course it was going to be here, even though uh, I wasn't planning on it because I hadn't reached that point of the game yet, but here we are. Go play Xenoblade Chronicles. Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3 is one of my favorite songs of all time. It was composed by Brad Boxer, who was producer for Michael Jackson at that time. And we know that Michael Jackson also worked on the Sonic 3 soundtrack. 
So who knows, maybe he was involved on that song too. I think it might be the most memorable song of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This song is pretty unique because it blends this icy vibes with that specific groove uh, that we can hear in Michael Jackson's songs as well. Uh, especially with the, the bass at the end of the song, which goes uh, And I think they nailed the ice aspect by choosing this uh, particularly cold sound, uh, especially with the, the chords on the beginning, and even a bit later when the lead melody uh, plays along with a very high arpeggio that sounds very, let's say, snowy. Usually, ice tracks are pretty calm. So blending the chill aspect with that groove makes it so unique. This is why I love this song so much. We have everything for making a good song here. We have a groovy bass, um, a simple melody that stays in your mind, and a simple structure, which was important for Scenic 3 because levels back then were pretty short, you could finish a level in one or two minutes, so um, this is why they couldn't make songs that, that were too long, so the length is perfect. Route 216 is a perfect example of what winter is all about, contrast extremes. Because while the second half is jolly, the first half of the theme is slow, solemn, pristine, and atmospheric. It uses traditional instruments that are associated with snow, and it acoustically mimics falling snowflakes and light shining through icicles. When this part is playing, you're just discovering the valleys of Mount Cornet. It's the most remote wilderness in the entire Sinnoh region, so this track sounds cautious yet optimistic. It's this pretty yet dangerous expanse of thick snow, experienced trainers, mountains, and bridges, so it's less triumphant sounding than the previous root themes in the game since you're not breezing through this section of the game at all. It's tedious and harsh. It sounds open and wide, but still warm. And then as you acclimate to the weather, the track becomes easy going like you're enjoying a wintry walk. It sounds cool. Yeah, snow can be extremely dangerous and the cold is unforgiving, but you're on this journey with your trusted friends and nothing can stop you. At the end of the day, this is just another jazzy track in diamond, pearl, and platinum. And you're still astounded at how jazz fits a cold region like Sinnoh. It's probably because the warmth and soul that the music brings feels like home. So the reason why Root 216 is the ultimate winter theme in Pokemon is because it's, it isn't a cliche. It doesn't try to sound harsh and cold, and it also doesn't decide to sound overly festive and cheerful. It successfully combines all aspects of a freezing environment and showcases how sometimes the warmest feelings can be found in the coldest places. I have probably listened to the music of Sinnoh more than any other region in the Pokemon world, not because it's my favorite, but because it's the most atmospheric and realistic sounding. So it accompanies a lot of my walks around nature and my own life. I listen to Pokemon music every day when I'm, you know, making my way through any environment. So you bet I'm listening to tracks like Route 216 when I'm shoveling snow or walking through my neighborhood in a snowy December night as I look at all the lights. It's my favorite thing to do to introduce the winter season. For more amazing wintry tracks, I recommend The Path to the League from Pokemon Sun and Moon and Undela Town from Pokemon Black and White, Ice Path from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Search Hester from Sword and Shield, Snowbell City from X and Y, and Alabaster Icelands 1 from Legends Arceus. Up next we have a song called Snowflakes from Persona 4, although I'm pretty sure it's from Persona 4 Golden, which to my knowledge is like an enhanced version of the base Persona 4. Sorry, I get confused when it comes to Persona sometimes, especially 4, there's like a lot of iterations of it. But from what I think I gathered correctly, it's the like the next installment of Persona 4. And the song I heard, which is the one we're featuring today, is the Powder Snow Mix. So I actually have not heard the original Snowflakes. But disregarding that, this is one of those songs that I immediately just fell in love with. Um, Persona in general, just like many other songs here, I've discovered the series on this channel and reacting to its music and I believe I started with five yes I started with five and man I've just I've heard so many cool things from three one two all of them but four is such a I think four I've heard the least I could be wrong no I think that's still two anyways this song is definitely shot up to shot up there as far as one of my like top 10 favorite persona songs it just has this feeling that I mentioned previously with um, Skyrim, where I very much envy people that got to experience this, 
because I don't know exactly what's going on, but from what I've gathered, it's like the kind of the end of the game. It's a very um, conclusion. I'm not exactly sure how Persona works to this day, but it just takes place in like January. So it's like winter and I think that's kind of, I don't know about all the Personas, but I guess hinting in this game where like the end of the game is. Um, so yeah, this is one of those times where I definitely feel like I wish I could experience this feeling because it sounds so beautiful and that's it. You know, it's just a really beautiful uh, song and the, the vocals from this one are Shihoko Hirata, which I, th I think I've heard it before but it's hard to keep track. And the the arrangement that I've heard is uh, Atsuki Kirijo. That name I've definitely heard before, but it of course is Shoji Maguru as the original composition. One thing that stood out to me in the song besides everything really is uh, during the reaction of it and hearing it for the first time, uh, I definitely felt very emotional on it. And I don't remember exactly quite what I guessed, but I do remember saying that it was, the song felt very bittersweet. And uh, that was another time I got kind of lucky on the guest because people were kind of agreeing with, with that. Like, actually, Bittersweet is like a great way to describe the song because it's like beautiful. What is that coming to an end? And, you know, I just described uh, in Xenoblade, you know, how that feels where it's like I don't want it to end. So I, I totally know that feeling. And from the sounds of it, this is very late game. But the vocal melody, her beautiful voice, the blues guitar, this is definitely one of those songs that... Uh, I will say that if you experience this in, in game and in like if you streamed it or whatever, if you didn't stream it, uh, I would consider you to be very lucky because I. This is one of those times where I really feel like, man. That looks like such a, emotional, section, and with a song like that, I don't know if I would be able to like, contain it. So Persona Four Snowflakes, of course. I was gonna put this in here. Powder Snow Mix. I look forward to someday hearing the original. I still have not. But, um, yeah. Happy New Year's. Hey everyone, I'm Austin Lee Matthews, and I am a voice actor, writer, director, composer. I kind of do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but you've probably heard me as Roche in Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth, Ash in Trails of Cold Steel, Arthur in Mystery Skulls Animated, or by some miracle, you've heard my radio play Megaton Girl over on my YouTube channel. Uh, either way, you are here. I am here. Jesse is somewhere here, I think. And we're going to talk cold. Bitter, bitter, bitter cold. And the song that I am submitting for the approval of the Midnight Society is Arthas, My Son from World of Warcraft, a game that I have never played. But I think that most of us at some point have at least watched the Wrath of the Lich King cinematic, which I say because over on the Blizzard channel alone, it has over 25 million views, which means it probably has at least double that considering all the times that it's been reposted. Anyway, the song that plays during this cinematic is chilling in more ways than just temperature. It eases us into the domain of the Lich King through this mist of unease with a shrill bed of strings scraping into your ears as a powerful, mournful male choir slowly just builds this atmosphere of oppression with this low brass section growing with it until it becomes this wall of sound almost a blizzard of sound, if you will, which is a double pun. <laughs> um, and then it gives way for this ambient, echoing respite with a soft soprano choir now fading into that shrill string bed, feeling almost like you've stepped into a glacial cave to escape the cold wind. And then as you're in this, this, this space of just ambience, you hear a child soloist softly crying out, An Karenir Thanagor, long live the king, Morok Angalor, may he reign forever. A dirge mourning not just the loss of Arthas's father, but also of Arthas's humanity, which has long been cast aside for power. It is a moment of peace through loss, and that peace cannot and will not last forever. But whenever I hear this this moment, I could feel myself getting choked up. Um, and I'm glad that this section was later expanded in another piece called Invincible, which is another song that I wholly recommend. Um, but this piece continues, and the child's voice fades. 
and gives way for that male choir to return, and the powerful voices in tandem now sing for the rise of Arthas's reign. The hearts of his people have been stirred, and his undead army begins to rise from the snow, and we build again until a powerful war chant, wah, 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 begins to pound in your ears, and the ice cracks and gives way for an extremely literal vocal section. Erigo eo dreco modo, raise this dragon now as indeed a bone dragon quite literally emerges from the glacier beneath Arthas's feet. This whole section gives me the same Norse vibes that I get from Skyrim, an army of frostborn warriors all roaring in unison, clamoring for one lone hero to save all of them, except where in Skyrim, it is a triumphant call calling up you, the player. This is a rage-filled cry of oppressors, all raising up the voice of their Dark Lord, calling for him to darken the sky. Kaligo Kalem. The only thing that gives way for for any final respite of this force of will is that same shrill violin bed that we started with, this dissonant, cold violin bed giving way for a soundscape of eternal winter winds to end this piece of music. And good God, I love it. (laughs) Um, I threw all of this together really fast. It's been a really busy month for me. I apologize for no webcam. I I don't have one of those at the moment. but I, I hope that you all enjoy this piece as much as I do, Jesse, and all of you. Uh, I used to listen to this song with my grandmother, so this song is extremely important to me. And I hope that maybe by showing off this piece to some more folks, that'll be a nice way to honor her memory. So thank you all, and uh, thank you, Jesse, for letting me be a part of this. And um, peace out, Collective Home Slice. <laughs> Up next, we get to talk about one of my favorite games, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. You've heard me talk about this game probably hundreds of times by now if you've been watching the channel for a while. This is Ape Escape, and the song is called Snowy Mammoth. This is one of two songs that immediately inspired the episode. So if you've never watched one of these, uh, VGM Vibes, basically they're not ranked in like favoritism. It's more of a... Uh, uh, it's a bit random, but then when it gets to around like the last five or so those are the ones that like really inspired the episode and kind of like what i knew was going to be like the most talked about kind of thing so yeah ape escape is a game that it's uh actually i mentioned it before but ape escape is one of those that inspired the whole series because i wanted a reason to talk about songs that i know and then it turned into like songs that have like certain themes because this game goes through so many themes ape escape is a game that i really enjoyed from the playstation one where you are spike and you are capturing apes that have escaped (laughs) sounds so simple but yet there's so much innovation in this game so many things were ahead of its time the requirement of the dualshock analog controller all those uh, gadgets you see over there so instead of pressing the buttons to do attacks you're selecting the stuff and then you use your analogs to move it um so it was was such a cool thing and then like the the soundtrack is just like to me uh people ask me just about every day what's your favorite soundtrack what's your favorite this is pretty much in the top, I would say top three. So just to give you an idea of how much I love the soundtrack, it's so characteristic, it is wonderful, it matches every location, it's so well done. The original soundtrack is good, and then when it was redone in uh, 2011 to the Originape soundtrack from the same composer, Suichi Tarada, to clean up the sounds, that's amazing too. Like. This whole soundtrack, I cannot not talk enough about. It's so amazing. So let's talk about what's actually happening here. Snowy Mammoth is the name of the stage. And as you can see, that's why. This is uh, similar to, I guess, like your Kirby's and stuff. There's like worlds. And then within those worlds, there's other stages. And uh, by the way, I think it's funny that it's uh, it's so rare that I'm like, I get to talk about stuff that I know about because usually the reaction stuff, I'm always confused and I have so many questions and I don't know what's going on. But when it comes to this, I don't know. <laughs> but um, so you're in the world of New Friesland, and this is Snowy Mammoth. And uh, it's kind of like the way I can easily put it is just think of like a fire level, but sort of flip it on its head. So instead of like fire hazards and lava hazards, you have like ice hazards. So if you jump off the stage and go into the cold, you lose some health and you get shot right back up. And everything is so 
so much ice and cold infused. You got snow falling down. You got igloos everywhere. Uh, some the enemies are snowman. Um, you got the woolly mammoth, of course. There was one thing I really thought was kind of funny was uh, in this game you have this I forgot what it's called, but it's like a it's like a radar, and you get to see where the apes are by just moving it across the stage. And they went above and beyond. And instead of just telling you where they're at, you can press a little button, and it shows you like a little, uh, like a bio of them. <laughs> it shows you a picture of them, their name, their stats, and then like a little description of them. And uh, one of the characters in this game is just simply called Iced. <laughs> so they really went all like all out with the whole like with every theme with every stage. But the song itself is, you know, I'm gonna be honest here. I struggle with this with what I'm about to say here, but. When it comes to my favorite song in this game, I don't have one. It comes between, it's between two, and it's this one, and another song called Sushi Temple, which maybe will feature someday. But that's that's how much I admire the song. Uh, this song is really, really damn good because of the whole emphasis on the cold atmospheric synthesizers, the drum and bass, the bass itself. A lot of a lot of Ape Escape soundtrack has a huge emphasis on bass, but not just doing like low end stuff, but actually doing its own melodies. So it's it's amazing. And of course, if you go into a sneak mode and you start to uh, uh, crouch or a prone position, the music obviously changes too. But um, regarding the song again, the the main melody will most likely get stuck in your head. It is so catchy. Da, 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 da. But my favorite thing about this song is how it changes from like this long intro it's very very cold to the second part which you think at this point oh the song has started now the beat has kicked in this is how it is dun, da, dun, da, dun, dun. but then no out of nowhere full-on drum and bass just and it all happens like so quickly it's over before you know it, and it's just it's such a great song but i even took this a step further to show my love for it because um I went into uh, a friend of mine's reaction channel, Zordon of Doom. I'll uh, probably like link uh, her channel there. And I got to, I got to request video game music to someone else to, to react to, and I requested for her to check out uh, this song. So if you want to see that, go check it out. Um, I wish I can react to Ape Escape music because I would lose my mind. But uh, yeah, that's it. Ape Escape, Snowy Mammoth, definitely one of the biggest influences to this whole episode, and I love it, and I hear it all the time i hear the song almost every day that's that's, that's totally true but uh, we must move on to the uh, honorable mention before we get to the final song of this list My honorable mention for this one is Metal Gear Solid in a song called Enclosure. I will keep this brief. I cannot talk about it too much. This is a massive spoiler and something that everyone should experience. But um, and it's also the reason it's um, honorable mention is because it's not exclusive to one scene. It kind of happens in multiple areas, so it's not entirely snow. But I remember being very young and experiencing this section and all I could think about was snow and cold. And not just cold uh, weather, but, you know, the feeling of internal cold. And uh, yeah, I really can't say much about it. It's just a very beautiful song and a very beautiful game. This game kind of changed my life and how I saw video games and soundtracks all together. And uh, the fact that it has, like, wolves howling in the background with the song is just so beautiful. And I, I, just, I, I just wish everyone at some point to play Metal Gear Solid and realize how much of a game changer that game was at the time because it it felt like nothing ever and I'll, I'll always just praise it you know there's there's a couple songs that i could have chosen for metal gear solid but overall i think enclosure is a, a very specific one and i love metal gear solid so anytime i get to talk about it i will always get to talk about it so please play metal gear solid <laughs> We move on to the uh, the main inspiration for this whole episode and my kind of epitome of what like a snow, cold, and theme, cold, snow, ice, and all that entails. And that's coming up next. When it comes to snow-related themes in video games, 
to me, ever since I discovered it, has always been uh, Apotheosis from Journey. This is a song that feels a bit like it transcends like the human body. It is a bit of um, an emotional roller coaster. It is a song that I've seen many people begin to cry as soon as it starts. Um, it is highly emotional and I would say one of the most emotional songs I think I've probably ever heard in my life. And I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of talk about my experience with Journey, which will be brief, but just to give you an idea. Um, firstly, if you've never played Journey, uh, I guess you can maybe consider the spoilers because of where it plays, but it's kind of hard to spoil Journey since it's like the main premise of the game. But either way, the game is very short. If you have an afternoon, please play it. I, no, not even play it. Please experience it. So Journey, I remember specifically, it was right when I moved. We're going to get very metaphorical here because this is all true. Uh, when I moved away from home, I moved on my own with about $2,000 in my pocket. Uh, didn't know anybody and just kind of chased the dream. And hey, I mean, luckily, years later, I'm successful now. Cool. Yeah, but it wasn't always like this. But very early on in that um, in that transition of my life, uh, I remember specifically, I don't even remember if it was a demo or if it was just on sale, but I saw this game on the PS3 and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I saw the like a trailer for it and during like, the PS store and I was like, oh, that's, that's really cool. And then I just could not put it down. I just played it. I finished it that day. I never experienced anything like that before. Still to this day, it's such a unique game, such a unique experience. The silent protagonist, the meeting of like a stranger and becoming friends, the the visuals of the game still hold up and will never not look amazing. I still remember to this day the um, the specific scene in like kind of the desert where it turns into a side scroller for a second and you're surfing along the sunset. That image is burned into my memory and has been. It, well, not anymore, but it was it was my phone background for many, many years, just that scene right there. The way the sand looks and everything, and the, it's just a, it's a great experience, and I can't, ex I just can't um, emphasize that enough. And uh, I, would have, I would like to take this time to actually shout out another YouTube channel who very much did a study on the song alone, and that is uh, Game Score Fanfare on YouTube. They can do a much better job than than I and it's just it deserves all the views in in, in fact uh, the composer Austin Wintory uh, saw that video and commented on it which by the way Austin Wintory huge amount of respect was you know like between the ages of like 24 to 28 while composing this masterpiece you know like that's unheard of and it's had a su successful career because of it and um I would just like to take this other side opportunity to thank Austin for the emails we exchanged recently and that meant a lot to me and hopefully one day we can work together. Apotheosis is um, essentially what the game is all about. The game is about reaching this peak of the mountain and it does it in such a beautiful fashion. The song has such, this, uh, such a feeling of support you know earlier we talked about celeste and you know reaching the summit and uh, i thought it was kind of funny because we're like oh i'm gonna be talking about something some something kind of similar where this is the pretty much ending of the game and you're being you know pushed both uh metaphorically musically physically magically through this section and this whole section is so beautiful because most of this game has been sunsets and desert and sand and everything and all of a sudden you've like reached this angelic heavenly section and it's just snow everywhere beautiful waterfalls falling down it's a very highly emotional section of the game i've seen uh, a handful of playthroughs now and Almost every time they reach this section, when they go right through the uh, the sky and end up in the uh, the last section of the game, 
you can see their eyes like start to just ball up and it's it's a beautiful thing to see you know apotheosis is one of those songs where it, it's very much a standout the whole the whole soundtrack is dynamic there's so much i can talk about this but i just want to keep it brief the whole soundtrack is dynamic it changes along with what the game the player is doing and it just sounds like one long song if you really think about it the whole soundtrack sounds like one giant song connecting it all together but when it reaches apotheosis you are greeted with this beautiful cello this amazing lead and it's just so it to me is like the definition of like a climax of a song and i don't know what else to say about it you know it's just one of those things where i feel that all I can do is either praise it and be amongst the people that have experienced it and they know what I'm talking about. And there's this kind of thing I've noticed with Journey is that you kind of want to just tell other people about it. <laughs> you know, like if you played it, you kind of become a, uh, you know, someone who, who spreads the message. And seeing people experience this game is such a magical thing. And it's always going to hold up. It still holds up now. And I know that that game company has made a, a couple of other things that are similar, like Flower Flow and I think Abzu as well. Austin Wintory to me is a very big inspiration. Uh, super young, doing all these, still young, and having this amazing talent. Also was featured in another game I played, Hades. You know, it's just, uh, he's an inspiration because I'm right around the same age, but uh, there's nothing else I can say, really. So Apotheosis to me has always felt like, ever since I discovered it and went through it, it always felt like the quintessential snow area. And that's just like one layer of the whole thing, you know what I mean? But it also kind of ties in with the ending and all that. So it's I'm kind of trying to like walk on eggshells here so I don't spoil it for people, but it is just such a beautiful experience and play journey you know <laughs> play journey i think apotheosis is one of the best video game songs ever created i don't know if i mentioned that i think i think i should have mentioned that so not just ice snow cold um it it's and i should mention also that the i did a reaction for it which is a little odd because i've already played the game but i hadn't like paid attention really at that point until I like re-reacted to it again and I could just focus on the song as an adult and that's when I that's when I it, like it really really clicked for me and then I replayed it again and then again and yeah it has that effect it's like the perfect length for a game so you can replay it anyways that is my pick for the uh the snow themes my, my own personal pick let me know what yours is so before I get out of here, I want to mention a couple things. Firstly, thank you for three years. This is my three year anniversary of diving into video game music discussion and reactions and now the vibe series. I can't believe it's been this long. And um, just a side note for the people that might be confused onto some of the songs that weren't voted on or were submitted by some of the guests here. I have since reacted to those songs and those will be coming shortly after this video. They've just been waiting. I haven't told anybody. I haven't told anyone about this episode. I've been keeping it secret for a while. So big thank you to everyone that participated, all the guests. I really admire them and their content. I'm so grateful that they all said yes and please check them out and support them. And with that said, I guess that kind of potentially opens the door for future guests and episodes. Who knows? I don't know how I'm gonna handle it. I can't guarantee anything. But it uh, seems like a perfect kind of combination, you know, to hear your uh, favorite creators talk about stuff that they like, kind of a little um, outside their bubble. And with that said, finally, the next episode will be the spooky season. So gather up those Halloween vibes and those, you know, skeleton stuff and all that. And I'll see you in VGM Vibe 7. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you to all the creators. Check them out. My name is Jesse in the auditorium. Thank you for VGM Vibe 6, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.